Now, WPG Talk Radio 1450 presents Ask the State Senator. It's your opportunity to talk directly to State Senator Jeff Van Drew. Call 609-407-1450 with your questions. Now with State Senator Jeff Van Drew, here's Harry Hurley. Ah, it feels like we never left because we didn't. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome back. We, we Well, we visit whenever need be, but the monthly visits that we have in the evening here on the um, occasion of the Ask the Senator program, it's always a delight. Ladies and gentlemen, your Senator Jeff Andrew from the 1st Legislative District. Senator, welcome. It's Ask the Senator time. How are you? I'm doing great, Harry. Thanks for having me. Happy happy Thanksgiving Eve. Uh, this is always the beginning of it all and nice Beautiful holiday. Time. All I know is, and I don't know if the folks that are listening feel the same way, it seems to me that every year is going faster than the year before. And I know we all say that and always talk about it, but it really yeah. seems to be going quick now. I mean, I just remember it seems like yesterday. It's true. But then there's some things that make it almost like a sort of like a dichotomy, though, or paradoxical, <clears throat> or whatever you want to call it, because it actually seems like a longer period since the general election than it's really been. If you look at it, it's only been a few weeks. Oh, absolutely. But for some reason, that seems a long time ago. Further yeah. in the rearview mirror, but still, the, I, I throw that out not to confuse. And, the an point. old gentleman told me one time. He said, "The hours, days, and weeks sometimes will go by slowly, but the years and decades will move quickly." That's brilliant, and that's true. Yeah. And you know, you think about it. I mean, I think about the fact of when we started this, and when you started your public electoral public service career. It doesn't seem possible that it's been a quarter of a century. Uh, unbelievable. That's mind-blowing. <laughs> it's kind of scary, actually. And we both kept our hair. Which yeah, is, which I know. Is, we which both, is nice I, it's, which is pretty amazing. I know. <laughs> which is a nice Although thing. Although mine's gotten a whole lot lighter. <laughs> yes. No stress. Yeah. No stress in your line yeah. of work. By the way, we don't talk about it enough. How is dentistry? Dentistry is fine. Let's forget about ask the senator. Dentistry is fine. The I, I enjoy my patients. It brings you into the real world, and you know, make sure. I mean, people would, you know, during this campaign, during this last campaign on the assembly race, not uh, it was not a senate race, but they talked a lot about business and running a business and what it's like to run a business. And um, we always said that our team would be balanced because we have the two veterans and myself, because I was sort of the guy that's been, you know, for thirty five years meeting a. Payroll yeah. and taking care of patients and doing what you have to do. When paying you, payroll taxes and paying, you know. God help us. The, yeah, the key, it gets harder and harder. The key to, I believe, the key to a successful legislator is having not only the business background, but still being in business. Because what happens, if you look at the examples, I was talking to somebody that we both know that I'll just protect the other day, and I said, you know, look at the state of Texas. They meet a couple of times in the summer, the legislature. Yeah. That's it. We meet all the time, and it's a mess. And, and, and a lot of the people <laughs> become full-time legislators well, at $49,000 a year with no benefits. Yeah, yeah. So I think there is something to be said for someone who has to meet a payroll that understands that every vote that you cast to either raise taxes or put some onerous fee or to change something, that you are directly impacted by that. I think that's an operational strength. I, th- I think it's a good thing, too. I agree with you, or at least somebody who's had the experience of it, for sure. Um, it's interesting. I, 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 I joke sometimes when we go in, and I'll be driving in. If I do drive in with a friend at times, I will, and say my, my, my goal and my hope for this particular session and every session is that the legislature collectively does more good than harm. That's what yeah. I hope for. Yeah. You know, because sometimes you wonder, you know. Right. In other, in other words, if they met less. That's in less, Washington, too, by right. the way. If they met less, it might be better. It might be better. Leave people alone. I'm not sure. Yeah. You know? <laughs> we have a lot to talk about this hour with Senator Van Drew, and you're never shy, ladies and gentlemen. So you jump in. We always pri- – I have enough questions till tomorrow morning, but you can jump in right now until just past the top of the hour and pose your questions for Senator Jeff Andrew at 609-407-1450. Let me hit you right up front because this seems like people are trying to just make this like it's inevitable. Have you changed your mind on the gas tax that's now being discussed, which includes an, an estate tax reduction, doesn't right. it? it uh, well, it's one of the it's ideas sort of like speaking making about it okay, linking like, it to make yeah, it well, better, which it, it would. I mean, don't misunderstand me. I certainly – let me answer this. How right about – how about, let me how be about, very though, clear. About, I do not support the gas tax. Right. How about reduce the estate tax yeah, or eliminate right. it? 
and not raise the gas, gas tax. Taxes. That would be that? that would be my hope. Yeah. That would be my hope. You know, we have this thought in, in in our legislative district that if you were able to do things like reduce the pension tax or get rid of the tax on pensions in New Jersey. Um, reduce the estate tax, which really means linking it to the federal number rather than the number that was done during the McGreevy administration. Um, Doing those types of tax reductions, inheritance tax as well, that you're going to keep more people in the state. If you keep more people in the state who are the kind of people that can spend money, uh, you're going to have more revenues. And when you have more revenues, you're going to be able to do more. And I believe that that's part of what I really feel is is really the answer. I know the gas tax is a huge issue. It's a big problem. Our transportation infrastructure is a big problem. I know that there are going to be, in my mind, there will be some Republicans that are going to vote for it I as know. well. I know. Um, and I understand that. I and really I, don't like that because gas is unusually – it's come down in price that, for, that, that, that it almost looks like the legislature is taking advantage of a momentary – positive, slam the tax on there, and then you know those prices at some point. Thank, there'll, there'll be an embargo. Thank goodness it came down. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, thank it, God. But but they're going to go up at some point, and then the gas tax stays. You see, I, I have a long enough memory, and I know that you do too, and I know a lot of our listeners do, when Governor Burns said, hey, we're just going to have this sales tax just to pay for this item, and as soon as it's paid off, the sales tax goes away, never goes away. Yeah. Do you know the, the taxes on the uh, expressway? only until the roads were paid for and those tolls were going to go away. They never go away. They keep going up. So that's that's the problem here. I'll paraphrase a little bit. I don't have the exact terminology, but it was Ben Franklin among many who said that a tax levied is never a tax removed. You know? There you go. And that's true. I mean, once a tax is put in place, it is very, very rare that, you know, there are sunsets built in. Sometimes I'll even say sometimes in the legislature, why do why does everybody bother to put the sunset in? Because you know you're just going to reauthorize yes. it anyhow. I mean, let's just be intellectually I, Senator, honest. Senator, I tease and, my audience, the, the, the tax, the phone tax from the Spanish-American War came <laughs> off during the Bill Clinton presidency. Okay? That's, yeah. I mean, it's just permanent. They And right, you use the term intellectual honesty. Just tell people. This is the tax, and it's not going away. It's yep. just going to, you know. It's but, there. But they try to trick us. Another thing that I don't like when the legislature does these things where they make something secondary, then by the next year it's primary, and they like a one-two hustle on us. Exactly. And, you know, my concern with the gas tax particularly, and, and you brought out part of it, is that, number one, we finally have one tax in New Jersey that is lower than just about any other state. You know, it's either number, it's as far as the top three lowest, it's number two, three, four, depending on, you know, what the gas prices are at a particular point in time. That's a good thing. People tend to fill their tank when they're in New Jersey. Yes. Uh, it helps tourism. People travel more when gas is cheaper. Um, and By the it way, is before, good the, term, it gives people before relief. the term progressive became <clears throat> a dirty word, because liberals didn't want to be called liberals, so they said they're progressives. It's referred to as a progressive tax because you – it's not regressive because you're right. People coming through pay it as well Yep. that, that yep. don't live here, Yep. which is a good thing. But the problem is we all have to pay it too though. Exactly. And so – and that's what happens. And in South Jersey – where we rely on our vehicles more than most folks do, where we rely on our vehicles uh, because of the kinds of businesses we have, because we're more rural, because the area is larger, um, because of so many different reasons. We're a lot of people in the construction trades, the marine fisheries trades, those types of businesses. They use larger vehicles, bigger vehicles. They put more miles on. We have to travel further. Our commutes are bigger. So it's particularly an onerous, difficult tax for South Jersey. If you're in Hudson County, I have to say, Harry, in all honesty, you're not going to feel it as much. Right. You know, you're going to feel an increase in a New Jersey transit tax more than you're going to feel exactly. you know, a, yeah. a, a gas tax increase. So I think it's a particularly bad tax for South Jersey. I've spoke out against it for a long time. We've known it's been coming. Uh, I was so happy when you know it was originally put off and said, let's you know do pay go. We'll try to pay as we go along. And unfortunately, the revenues in the state didn't grow as much as you would have liked or we would have liked. Uh, so are you but, opposed to this gas tax? Yes. Even with the yes. estate yes. caveat? Yes. Good. That's where you were, and they added that's that on I there, and, and that's where you stay. I have to tip my cap. First of all, 
I, I can't assume anything. You're a busy man and you're a doctor and you've got all these things going on. But I hope that you are one of my <clears> readers <throat> of The Current and The Gazette newspaper. Uh, sure, of course I am. Because I think we had – I'm not bragging, but I think we had an incredible season, election season. We gave every single candidate uh, a fair deal. We did a lot of elaborate profiles. We did a lot of coverage. We reviewed the races uh, without you know showing any bias one way or the other. We provided the readers with a lot of information. We provided the polling data that was out there. And I have to say, for as close as I followed this race, I thought there was a very good chance that both of your candidates were going to win for a couple of reasons. Number one, they're good men. Number two, one of them was an incumbent. Number three, and it really is at the top of the list, is the Van Drew factor. It is absolutely incredible. I think you will agree with me that it is almost supernatural when you look at the total demographics of District 1 and that three Democrats hold all three legislative seats. I call it politically supernatural. It's amazing. Actually. And I think it's because we're just not typical. We're independent. We really are independent-minded folks, and so are the gentlemen that won. won. Uh, and let's really remember that between the two of them, and this matters, this came up in the election. Some people said, oh, what, what does their military record matter? It does matter because it shows they were able to make uh, the right judgment in very difficult situations. You know, Bruce Land, who you don't know as well yet, but you will come to know, Bruce Land, different war, different era, different yeah. age, Vietnam War. Are you surprised received... that both of your guys won? I mean, I knew Andrew no, Zach I... was going to win. Then I knew it was between Land and Fiocchi, although I like Jim, Jimmy Sorrow, and I've known him. I ref with him for 20-some years. Great guy. But out of four people, it was going to come down to Andrew Zach, in my view, having the top spot, and then Land and Fiocchi fighting it out. fighting out for the second one. I wouldn't have been shocked based on what, you know, I was feeling at the time that it could have stayed exactly as it was, but I was leaning towards and I did say it on air a number of times and I was even asked by a listener what do I think is going to happen and I said Fiocchi's out. I mean, it's going to be uh, Andrzejak and it's going to be Land, but I didn't think by the margin that it turned out to be, though. Yeah, it, it turned out to be a bigger margin. They turned out to win Cape May County, which Shocking. is, you know, I've been blessed. Uh, Basically in a Republican to year. To win, yeah, to, to win Cape May County. But usually I always say to the folks that are, especially when they're from Cumberland County, if they run with me or if they're new, hey, you know, this is really tough going here. So you're going to lose in get, Cape May, right, as long keep as you it get close, close. Exactly. and then you're going to win it with Cumberland exactly. and all. But they won it, and that was yeah. really amazing. And and really, I have to say, and I'm not just trying to, to, to be a friend to you, which we are, and be gratuitous, which I'm not. Uh, it's really to your credit because even when you're not on the ballot, you you work like you are running. I mean, well, I told you that in the beginning. Like I told I know. you that in the beginning. I said um, I'm going to work as hard as if I was running this you thing. Did. You know, I did the stood in front of the supermarkets with them, had the name on the signs with them, shook hands with people with them, got out there with them. Uh, you know, the only thing I didn't do was jump up and you know get, get involved in the debate or something. Obviously, which you can't do. But I mean, I, I wanted people to understand that in certain extraordinary situations, and it is extraordinary, I've been blessed to have some good people run with me. Um, Bob Andrzejczak is a very, very special kind of person. Oh, he's, I mean, he's it's a beautiful, amazing. Beautiful person, beautiful he really person. is. It's an amazing, amazing story. I mean, you have two um, very humble, humble people. guys. Bruce Land. Yeah. I mean, literally, when you read, I don't say you look this. at their this resume. You couldn't even get great. them to even tell you what they did. You got to go investigate these great things they exactly. did. Exactly. When when we said, look, let's see the information on your bronze stars yeah. with valor, both of them. I know. was very proud um, of the piece that I did on the two of them. Yes, in the current, it was a beautiful piece. I mean. Their, their pedigree, yeah. their their contributions to our country are just beautiful. Yep. And if you can make those kinds of decisions under fire, it doesn't absolutely mean that you're going to be a great legislator, but it does mean that you have the stuff of you can what handle it the takes, pressure. that you can handle the yeah, pressure, yeah. that you can have some difficult decisions, that when you have to stand up for your district and say no, even though other folks might be trying to push you a different way, your party or whomever, yeah. that you're going to stand up and do the right thing, you know these are folks that are going to do it. And hey, what, look, I look at Andrew's act. The man died. How many times? Six, seven times? And, and Bled out seven times. Right. Okay. So I got that sort of committed to memory. Bled out seven times, you know, um, left his leg on the battlefield. So you think 
pushing a button, you know, is is come on. Exactly. I mean, come he's, on. he's seen, you know. Oh, I, I can't I, take it. I got to push this button. button. I, they told yeah. me not to, and yes I got to do no, it. Yes or no? Can I vote present? I, <laughs> I mean, come on. So it's really, it's really amazing. Frank is standing by. Callers, you can join us next. I want to follow up on this with Senator Van Drew in just a little bit. Hey, Frank, welcome to the program. You can ask the senator. How about right now? Thanks for taking my call. Um, yeah. I'm, let me let me preface this by first saying uh, that I'm a tremendous conservative and a Republican. But uh, Senator Van Drew shows up at uh, one of the great supporters of the Boy Scouts. I have three sons that are all Eagle Scouts, and uh, Jeff showed up at all the ceremonies. And these, these are probably things people don't realize about it. But uh, he shows up, and he really does support uh, the local activities that uh, somehow uh, make communities better. And I just want to say that, to, to preface that. One other thing, Harry, you had mentioned that about progressive taxes. Yeah. And it was, Carl, it was Karl Marx that stated that if you wanted to control the people, tax them progressively. So I, I just, I, even though you said it's a good tax... Oh, no, 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 no. And I'm so happy you're calling me out on it, Frank. I don't want this tax. I'm opposed to this tax. The only thing I begrudgingly admit that if it does get placed on us, a lot of people who don't live here will also right. pay it. That's the only – I'm not in favor of this tax. I fought the McGreevy effort. Yeah. yeah, I got you. I got you. Thank you, gentlemen. Yep. Great show. As thank always, you. And thank stuff. you for the speaking about the scouts a little bit. And if we can just digress yeah, for yeah. a second. The, then we'll get a break. The in. work that they do. Um, I'm, I'm so proud of these Eagle Scouts. And I'm, I, I do everything, literally move heaven and earth to be at the Eagle Scout Courts of Honor because these are really unusual, exceptional individuals as well. And Absolutely. it, it yep. teaches people. It teaches all of us. It sets role models for all of us of what we really should be striving for and what is right, what the country is really about, you know. And so much of what is in that Eagle Scout Court of Honor ceremony comes right out of or is so similar to the Declaration of Independence. You've probably heard me say, you know, it was actually started in England, in the U.K., but it is a really uniquely American experience when you talk about, you yeah. know, sacrifice and honor and valor. And, and I that. applaud you, and, and you're correct. You've showed up at every ceremony. No Republicans have ever been there. And I've been to uh, more than two dozen of these ceremonies. And uh, as always, you've showed up at every one. And again, there are future leaders and our future citizens. They are. And uh, people should recognize them. And again, thank you, uh, Jeff Andrew. Hey, it's a great call, Frank. Thank you, Frank. Have a great Enjoy night. Yep, happy yeah. Thanksgiving to you and yours as well. As we go to the break, let me just say this to you because this is something that I've been remarking on for the 25 years plus that we've known each other. You're not looked upon as Democrat or Republican or labels. <clears throat> this is this is the power of your success. It is pure. It's not political. So here is a caller that wanted to make it clear, I'm a conservative Republican, and then he goes on to say all these things about you. Right, you which have I found, appreciate. You have found a way because of your um, your authenticity, your sincerity, and your decency and your honesty to be above the, the label. It's amazing. And the coattails – and like I don't want to take anything away from Andrzak or Land, and you never would. You would never take credit that you elected them. But it, it I, I'm telling you, it is amazing to see how people, regardless of their party affiliation, come to the same conclusion about you. And it is so rare that anybody in elective office, and especially for the time that you've been in, because you can't. You know the, the you know my theory, Senator. You can't fake sincerity. You get called out. You know, phonies get called out. and Especially if you're there for a little while. <laughs> of course. So, I mean, I know you're cognizant of this, but are you fully aware to the degree – and it confounds – believe me, and I have a lot of friends on both sides. It confounds people that people don't care whether you're Republican or Democrat. I, I, I hope they don't. And Well, look at the I results. I know, and I, I – Never take that for granted. And you, one thing that is so important in this business is not to get a swell head, not to really become egotistical about winning an election or winning then you get a few out. elections. Because then you can get knocked out and you're not going to serve as well. That's right. the whole point. The more that, frankly, I've seen the process and that I'm in the process 
uh, the more it brings, and it really does bring humility to me because I've seen just about every crazy thing that you can see. There's never an election almost. <laughs> There's almost never an election. And that's why I still have some faith in the process, not as much as I would like to have because the process has diminished somewhat. But there's never an election where you aren't surprised, right? There's sure. something hey, look somewhere at 16. that happens. Yep. Who saw that coming? Yep, exactly. They said only two competitive races are one and two, and they're tighter than a tick. Well, District 2 was very, very close. District 1 turned out not to be. Yep. And then exactly. District 16, nobody even looked at. Yep. That wasn't supposed to happen. District 11. That's what I meant, District, District 11. 11. Yep. That wasn't supposed to happen. Yep, that wasn't supposed to happen. And they probably didn't realize it and probably took it for granted. Yep. And, and the people had other ideas. Careful, and the people had other ideas. And I don't even know all the intricacies of what happened there. But, I mean, that was that. And, was by the really way, it was surprising. very close. Yes. It was a handful absolutely. of votes. But yet still – the seat turned over. That it was even close. Exactly. That close. And that has been a district before. It's been a swing district. It has. It's, it's gone both ways. Brief time so. out. We're going to jump up and we'll be right back. If you have a question for Senator Jeff Andrew, he'll be with us until a couple of minutes past the top of the hour. Then we'll be joined by uh, Mark Levin in normal programming. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity each month to present Senator Jeff Andrew. We have a lot more questions here, and we hope that you will have on your end, because after all, the whole program point is for you to ask the senator. 609-407-1450. Phone lines are open. Talking about what Frank was just talking about, how Van Drew is everywhere, whether it's at the Boy Scouts or all these different events that I see him at. Uh, Van Drew and Van Drew and Andrzak and Van Drew and Andrzak and Land have been such longtime supporters of so many of the community events that we broadcast here on WPG Talk Radio 1450. And there are there are banner presenting sponsors for many, many years, not in election years, in many consecutive years. And we appreciate that very much. And we'll give you a little um, promo of what's going to be happening Thursday morning right here. WPG Talk Radio 1450 presents Ask the State Senator. It's your opportunity to talk directly to State Senator Jeff Van Drew. Call 609-407-1450 with your questions. Now with State Senator Jeff Van Drew, here's Harry Hurley. Welcome back, and please join us on the phone line, 609-407-1450. I am Harry Hurley. We are with the distinguished gentleman from the 1st Legislative District, the Honorable Senator Jeff Andrew. We visit monthly here on the program called Ask the Senator, which means it's your opportunity to call in. The phone lines have blazed in each episode that we've done, and I presume that tonight will be no different. 609-407-1450. How do you think, obviously we know, because he has one term under his belt, what kind of assemblyman Assemblyman Andrzak is uh, Senator Van Drew. What kind of team do you think Assemblyman Andrzak and now Assemblyman-elect as of January, Assemblyman Bruce Land, what, what kind of team do you think they will be? Well, there's certainly going to be a team that's really caring about veterans. So, you know, we have this issue, and I know Congressman Lobiondo has worked very hard on it, and we're going to continue to work hard on it and try to help him from the state level and really push um, this issue of, lo- of health care. You know, so you have the VA, which is this giant bureaucracy, and some people, Republicans included sometimes, just think if we throw more money at it, that that's going to make it better. And it really hasn't in many ways. I mean, we hear the stories about people dying while they're waiting to be seen, cases being closed out because it's more convenient to close them out so you can make your statistics look better and so forth. Even after all the attention, Senator Van Drew, the wait time is worse than ever, and they're paying these just unseemly bonuses to government It's unbelievable. It it is. It truly is. And and if you really want to be – you know what I I say to folks that are progressive? If you really want to be progressive or really want to be conservative, it's time for a new model. Now, that doesn't mean that all VA hospitals should go away. There should be specialty hospitals. There should be VA hospitals in certain certain circumstances and so forth. But really, for the average Joe living in their community, and what a great place to start a pilot program to do this, they should be. And I'm stating something we've all talked about. We did think, and then it really was not what it was built up to be. If Um, If you're dealing with PTSD, the veterans' hospitals are amazing. 
But if you're just looking for general well care or, you know, some kind of, you know, colonoscopy or or some kind of just basic health care, that veteran's card should let them go to Shore to Medical sh- Center, exactly. wherever they want to go. This is a no-brainer. Yeah. And the hospital— I think it'll save money. It, it will, it'll save money. It'll provide better care for the veteran. It will help our economy. It's really something that would help the economy of all the areas because it's gonna you're going to have more local nurses and more local doctors and more local eating establishments that are located within the area of the hospital. So much good could come from it. And it, it frustrates me so much because supposedly we want to think on the cutting edge and do new and different yeah. things. Well, here's a new and different cutting edge initiative we can take. So we're going to still continue to every year. We're going to, whenever we can, produce a resolution. It's, it's the highest thing that we can do, yep. a joint yep. from the Senate and the Assembly that, you know, goes to Congress and says, we want a pilot program. We want it to be here in South Jersey. Let's give it a shot down here. Let's see how it goes. If it doesn't work, if it doesn't work well, then we don't do it anymore. How about Let's this? Let's give it a chance. Senator, here is something that I've been floating for at least a decade. It hasn't happened yet. It seems like such a no-brainer. Until, If or until we get what you're talking about, which is really the direction that just to do the right thing by our veterans, we should get that done. But we haven't been able to get that done. We don't even have a bus that has a bathroom on it. We're asking people that in some cases need a restroom well before they would get from Atlanta County or Cape May County all the way to Delaware or somewhere Mm -hmm. like that. We can't get them a bus. I mean, you think about the stress the of dealing with that. Exactly. Imagine that kind of situation where we don't even have a bus. I mean, you go to Disney World, every bus has a restroom on the back of the bus. Yep. But we can't. how can we not get that done? And the amazing part of it is the money that they're spending, the kind of money that they're actually putting out – and the money that's being allocated to the VA would really mandate that we have the kind of resources to help our veterans that we should have, and yet we don't, and it's it's just so disappointing. I, I'm hopeful that you know enough people will speak about this for enough years that will push hard enough that someday this is going to come. This 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 will be changed. I'm really really hopeful. So you know that's something I know. And until it does get together. a bus with a, with a, with a, with a, with a sure. bathroom. Sure, that, 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 we by should the be way, able to get donations. That's a good idea for that. because, as you just stated, you're right. In certain circumstances, like PTSD or whatever, they still may be going to Delaware. Yes. They still may be going to Philly. They still may be going to East Orange from Ocean County. So they should have that bus from the VA, supplied from the VA, paid for by the VA. And you know, they're a little more comfortable, the seating, and they know. And and a lot of times... No, we've had to get... We've... The good people at Burke Chevrolet down in Cape May yeah. County got money together for a van and had a big fundraiser. Yes. We've all done that throughout yes. the district. It should We've be a, actually yes. raised funds almost like we're a, God help us, a third it, world yes. country I that know. can't take care I of know. our veterans. I know. I don't, it's, it's, it's sad. And the thing about it, too, is it's psychological even because... Just having a restroom, sometimes you don't need it. But when you don't have one and you think you're going to need it, it's very stressful for for an older person or it could even be a younger person that has a medical condition. Absolutely. So I, I think that's something that we could actually look into because if the other stuff is just – Votes that take place and nothing ever happens. And you remember the time uh, Mike Merlino and uh, Commander Bill Butler, they led an incredible effort. And I forget the number, but it was something like tens of thousands of signatures from people that wanted what we're talking about to happen. Yep. Presented to General Jinseki and pff, nothing happens. Yep, I know. So until nothing happens, let's at least get a bus that has a restroom and that's comfortable for our veterans. I think it's the least that we can do for people that have put so much, you know, uh, on the line and and provided such a service for our country. To me, it's it's a no brainer. Yep, I, I agree with you. And and so that's a lot of what these guys are going to work on. They, you know, Bob already did do, which I was actually proud to be the Senate sponsor uh, along with him of the Stolen Valor Act and other pieces of legislation that are going to be veterans related. I love that. Um, and we're going to try to also push. A moderate thinking agenda where we work together, and that's where we will work as a team. You know what I mean? And try yeah. to have a voice within the caucus that says, you know, hey, let's slow down a little bit. Let's think this through a little bit. Let's not 
just immediately have another tax. Let's see what we're going to do. There's, there's so many issues that are going to come up. I haven't even, you know, uh, and I've heard it from both points of view, from both Republicans and Democrats. Should we legalize recreational marijuana? You know, it's a yeah. revenue source. Yeah, right. Uh, people are supportive of it. I am not particularly supportive of it and really have some real concerns with it because as much as we say there's so many problems with drugs, I don't know that legalizing another drug is necessarily the answer. I mean, we say there's there are problems with prescription pills, which are prescription and are for, speci- for specific mm-hmm. medical conditions, um, and yet we're also speaking about legalizing marijuana. Medical marijuana I voted for and yes. I agreed with, and I think we put together a good program that's very tight. I agree and, with that too, and, and that's been very bipartisan. The- Governor Christie obviously agrees yes. with it. Senator Jeff Andrew agrees with yep. it. I used to even be opposed to medical marijuana. And I took a good hard look at it, Senator, and I thought, look, if you're somebody that's dealing with some terminal stage of yep. cancer, you can't even eat because you're so nauseous or you have tremors or you know it would help you with MS or for any number of reasons that doctors will say. And of course, it doesn't have to be smoked. It can be ingested. There's different ways uh, you know, to, to get the, the, the benefit without the THC and all of that. I can't be opposed to medical marijuana when it can help people like that. You know what sold me on it? And this is a true story. One day, a Republican mayor's mother came to me and said, my friend is very sick and really, it really does help her. And she actually has to go out on the street now or have somebody go out on the street to buy it. Which is terrible. And it's just wrong. Uh, it's yeah, terrible because so you don't know just what you're getting. You don't it's know, just, it, it just it, it, Committing and, a crime. And, to, to... and it really made me think. You know what yeah. I mean? It made, it made me think about it. But we're going to have a lot of issues. So I think that these two guys um, are going to represent the – vision and the focus and the ideas and the desires of the district, which tends to be a moderate district. Senator, as somebody that tries mm. to, to to be not bipartisan but nonpartisan, it's going to get to the silly season soon because after this year, then we're in an election year for governor. Both parties, Democrats haven't had it in two terms, going to want it back. Fierce competition probably for the Democratic nomination. Ditto on the Republican side. So I think this year is an opportunity where it's an off year. No, Nobody's running in the legislature. Nobody's running for governor. There could be the opportunity to get a lot done this year. I hope that's the case. Once again, Harry, you've hit it right on the head. It's exactly right. Uh, it's the year. I was speaking to the Senate president, he pretty much said the same thing. I think the governor knows the same thing. I saw the governor in Avalon when he was in recently, uh, not too long ago in New Jersey, when we thought we were going to have that storm. Thank God yes. we didn't. Uh, and sp- speaking about moving some appointments and doing some other things. I love getting stuff done. I- I'm so – I this is where I really am, I guess sometimes I say, not a good politician because – I actually enjoyed tremendously when we were working with Governor Christie and people were getting mad at Sweeney. Remember that? Oh, yeah. On the Democrat side. And they were getting mad at Christie, some folks on the Republican side. And I even had, on both sides of the aisle, were guilty of it. Um, The governor had agreed on a particular appointment, which was a good appointment. And there were a couple of Republicans, and I won't say who, who voted against it. And I said, why? And they said, well, it's a Democrat. We're not voting for it, even though... I said, yeah, but it's a really very moderate to conservative person, very unusual. It's my appointment. It's a, yeah, but we're not voting for any. And certainly it happened on the other side. So I mean, for it, no it, good reason. No good reason. And every, every day that goes by so often in, in the Democratic caucus, it's like, how can we screw them up today? You know what I mean? What can we do that? And you know, that's the way it is. And it's, it's amplified. It's no way to run a state. To, it's, it's much worse in Washington. It's oh, without even a doubt. It's much worse in Washington. And sometimes I wonder if it's really just if the congressman has to shake his head. Yeah, exactly. Because you, it, the key is you do want you're in this because you want to get things done. You're sure. not in it for the posturing. So where the, you po- disagree, vote differently, get it done, and whoever wins the vote wins the vote. But then move on and try to get things done. Yeah, and try to accomplish. And the when goals. you disagree, it should be for a principled reason. It shouldn't be that hey, I have no reason not to vote for that nominee, but they're just the opposite party. So. I'm saying no yeah, to it. We're not going to let so-and-so win this one. Yeah, you know what I mean? It just, it's not, it's not a good thing. We have to really come, I believe, really come together. 41 minutes past the hour. When we come back, we're going to talk about the new smart gun legislation that's being proposed. We'll get Senator Van Drew's take on that. And again, don't be shy. 609-407-1450. Phone lines are open right now. It's Ask the Senator. 
with the Honorable Jeff Andrew, the senator from the 1st Legislative District. 609-407-1450. Phone lines are open. We'll check our email during the break, get any of the email questions. I see one right now. We'll get that out as well. 609-407-1450. It's Ask the Senator. WPG Talk Radio 1450 presents Ask the State Senator. It's your opportunity to talk directly to State Senator Jeff Van Drew. Call 609-407-1450 with your questions. Now with State Senator Jeff Van Drew, here's Harry Hurley. Pleasure to be here with you. We love the time that we get to spend with Senator Van Drew, and we want your questions as well. Joe, I'm going to get to yours in just a moment, but I already did prime the pump that we're going to speak about the smart gun legislation that's being proposed. Senator, how do you feel about that? I, as I've been very clear on it, I oppose it. Uh, I oppose the original smart gun legislation, which we knew wouldn't work, and it hasn't worked. They haven't really perfected the technology that's involved. You might see it on a James Bond movie, yeah. but, I mean, it's not really where it should be. So now there's a new bill that's being put forward, and I don't know how many people are really aware of it, that when the technology is available— that they're going to pull back that you have to use a smart gun. But when the technology is available, that the owner of the shop must carry them in stock, must Mm -hmm. have them on display and carry them in stock. Now, that seems benign. It seems benign, but it really isn't as benign as it seems because what people worry about, and I think there's some truth, because the people who are really pushing this and proposing this are very, very much anti-Second Amendment. So what I think... And I believe, and others believe. And if is it was that, benign, why would they be so? Why would they push it? <laughs> exactly. If it's nothing, then you don't need it. Yeah. So it's obviously so something. No, number one, I resent in the in the private sector world when you tell somebody that is not an absolute necessity that they have to carry. It's different. A pharmacy has to carry certain medications, but yeah. I mean, when you're speaking about you know a gun shop, it's up to them what legal guns they want to carry. Well, or and especially n- because carry. the right to bear arms is not a privilege; it's a right. It's a right. So yeah. that's a big. That's a categorical difference than other things that government can wield you know, a lot of influence in in certain areas where they can put restrictions in and different things. There's a reason that that Second Amendment so, is in there. So the gun manufacturers really haven't been making these smart guns. And I think they don't want to because they know what it means. And it's especially mission creep. In states in like – right, in, in places like New Jersey. Yeah. So I believe that the people who are proposing this feel that if they do it in this more gentle way – They'll start making them. It's the and then be- if right, they make them the and beginning. display them, yeah. a few people buy them, then all of a sudden we're back to a bill where everybody has to have that as the gun. Yeah. They have to have a smart gun. So it's just good to be against so that. I just think it's dangerous, and I think it's good to be against it. Is it going to uh, pass? The NRA, yeah, I, w- I would imagine it is going right. to pass. Yeah, the NRA is uh, definitely very, very much opposed to it. You know, Why there's so your- much more Go ahead. To, to – this is an important point for people. If there's anything I want – people to, who are listening today to get out of the discussion that we're having. There's much more to many of these pieces of legislation and to these issues than first meets the eye. So there is a bill, for example, that one senator has that certain animals can't be transported to New Jersey if you're a big game hunter. I'm not a big game hunter. I don't have any desire. I'm a gun owner, including handguns. I like target practice. I'm not a a big game hunter. But these are legal. This isn't the dentist who is doing something illegal or anything. This is legal. Right, poaching. Legal animals that are legal, that are not endangered, are on this list and no longer would be able to be brought into New Jersey. And, of course, the NRA is against that as well, too, because— why is that a necessity? That's somebody's right. You may not enjoy it. It may not be what you want to do, but it certainly is somebody's right. Um, there's a lot more sometimes to these votes than meets the eye at first perception. You have, <clears throat> I, I think, the highest rating you can have in this area. Uh, That's very unusual. Even people that would consider themselves conservative and they have a great record. I have an A+. Plus. Right. Wouldn't, it's very – isn't it rare to have an A+. Plus? Yes. Uh, you see some with A. A plus is like like supernatural, like the Van Drew factor that I write about in the current in the Gazette. Uh, so you have that. How did you forge your views with respect to the right to bear arms, the Second Amendment, so on? I've, f- f- you know, first of all, I served in the VA hospital. 
and I served, you know, obviously as a civilian, as a doctor, as a dentist, and got to meet so many people that were military folks, and got to understand what they threw, went through, and the rights that they fought for, and one of those rights, and that's why Bob and Bruce are very pro Second Amendment, and are always are going to be in the right place when it comes to Second Amendment issues, because they nearly died to protect that amendment as well as others. Uh, and as I got to know them and got to really think the issue out, I just try to think issues out. So every time we pass, an, I mean, literally, everybody listening, again, when there's more to an issue, guns scare people. So bad people do bad things with guns. So we pass more laws to prevent people who are honest, yeah. law-abiding yeah. people who never do anything bad with right. a gun. So that they can't get a gun, right? Now what? And it doesn't change what, anything what, that the bad guys are doing. No. So I always say, and this is a true story. I a senator came up to me one time and said, "You know, I wish you could be in a better place with guns." I said, "What do you mean?" She goes, "Well, you know, <laughs> where where I live, and this senator was from an urban area up in North Jersey. We have shoot, and they do. It's terrible the shootings they have. We see the shootings. We see the shootings in Millville." Yeah. You know, in 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 many towns, yeah. right? So she, the the senator said to me. I really believe that, you know, we need to do something. We need to restrict these guns more and so forth. And I said, well, it's really the problem is I'm against illegal guns. So I'm against when somebody steals your gun. I'm against someone who uses a gun illegally to hold up a store or to kill another living human being or to do something that's illegal or inappropriate. The interesting part of this to show how... The senator didn't really understand guns. The senator said to me, well, the gun that was used in this late, latest shooting was a legal gun, except it had the registration numbers filed off of it. No, what, it's not a legal gun. No, it's not. When you file the numbers off, when you take the numbers off a gun, it's obviously not, and it was being used illegally. It was a stolen gun. And that's the point. Uh, the point is that good people aren't doing these things. We have the only other issue, and I believe we can do more on this, Harry, and I believe there's a lot of good people there, are some of these mental health issues, you know, to make sure, sure. that the background checks are being done properly. Yeah. And that's a whole separate issue. And that has but, to be handled very, very carefully because there could be a unscrupulous way of trying to manipulate the Second Amendment by giving absolutely. too much power – to say, hey, you, you know, you wear a tinfoil hat, you know, you don't agree with climate change, so we're going to prosecute you, you're a kook, and you can't bear arms. You know you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Then they're capable of that. Yeah. Here's a tough one for you. Uh, well, it's not a tough one for you because you're intellectually honest no matter what we ask you. A listener, a gentle lady, just wrote in, you heard my phone, uh, just came in through email, and we have that set to do a little tone so that we can get it right out onto the air just like we're going to get Joe's question next. But this um, – Joe, I'm going out of order only because this is a question about the gun issue. What's your position on concealed carry in New Jersey? I have the bill to make it legal. I know. I just want people to hear it. And, and I'm, people, in, I'm in favor of that. Me, Jersey, sometimes it, it, I, I, I wish, I hope that everybody knows that now. Um, I have the bill to make it legal, and it's a really good bill. And now a lot of folks really support it because along with it goes some basic training so that you have to know how to use the gun properly because I one of my friends on the other side, you know, to, to say, well, at least, you know, this is something that makes sense. It didn't really help. But the point is, you know how to use it properly. You know how to load it and unload it, the safety features of it, and so forth. And I believe that if good people were la allowed to legally carry, we would have less issues in certain circumstances. If we you really look would. look at the states that have it, yep. the numbers are, I mean, I believe they're empirical. It's it's undeniable. You say you think. I think we could say we know. I believe. And I, I yes, believe. you believe. I and believe. I would love New Jersey to uh, to to do it. It seems unlikely that gun phobic state, gun phobic yeah. state, New Jersey is people really are very very not people. Again, I'm over exaggerating. Folks from certain legislators from the northern part of the state just don't really think the whole thing through. When I originally did the right to carry bill. It happened to get carried by the, the the story got carried by the Star Ledger and the New York Times. They made fun of me. 
And uh, I remember going into uh, a meeting room, and there were some other legislators, and there was somebody who is a very important person and was the acting governor at the time, so I don't think I have to tell you more. I know who and it is. Said, and said, are we going to have, hey, Jeff, we're going to have shootouts? Are we going to have shootouts now? Are we going to be uh, settling our disputes by putting our guns on a table and seeing who can grab it? And I said, do you have shootouts when you go to Disney? Do you have shootouts when you go skiing in Vermont? Do you have shootouts when you go to Rehoboth to buy at the stores? I mean, all the states around us, almost every state has a reasonable right. right to carry. And mine is a very reasonable bill. Yes. And Where what they discount, Senator, is the fact that gun owners are very responsible. Absolutely. They're responsible to very qualify serious. every six months. Yep. They do a really good job with their equipment. They do a very good job protecting, uh, you know, and maybe sometimes yep. separating ammo from the weapon and keeping it out of the reach of, you know, little ones and things like that. Gun owners are very, very responsible. You got I mean, they're not given in this debate that is more ideological than it is practical. The, the, the responsibility of gun owners and their level of being a responsible individual is is not talked about enough. I don't know if it would have made a difference in Paris, but we'll never know. Right, it couldn't have hurt. It, you know what I mean? Some how could it have hurt? A chance to try, literally, and in movie theaters, and after some of these other was things. shot and killed. Yeah. yeah, as they watched them just fall to the ground. Yeah, they would get I a have few, wonder, but you yeah. have at least you'd have a fighting chance. Yes. yes, I mean, of course, they'd be going against an AK forty seven there, but at least you'd have a fighting chance, and somebody that is trained could get off a good because shot. Most of these terrorists, yeah, are by nature cowards. Oh, there's no question about it. And they know they're the only one that will be armed, typically. Yep which is exactly. a big problem. Susan, your question is asked and answered now. It's a great question, and it gave the senator an opportunity to answer something that I already knew the answer to. Now, Joe is asking a question. This is a shop question about the budget process. How are, how how do things look? You know, it used to be several years ago where literally we would stop the clock at 1159, burning hot, scalding pages would come out of the copy machine. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, burning your hands at 3 o'clock in the morning. But it's been much more civilized lately. Maybe to some extent split government you know, uh, has its, um, its benefits because it's been much more orderly, much more civilized. I don't sense anything that's going to create any type of uh, drama. What are your thoughts? I, I little mini drama, but nothing major. I yeah. agree with you at this point in time. And I think civilized is the right word. I mean, that was, again, oh. that doesn't make sense at the last minute. <laughs> I mean, terrible. one of my first budgets, I'm trying to put these in order now. We didn't even, I didn't even have a hotel room <laughs> across the street reserved. I didn't know I was going to be there. Right. I was you a new legislator yeah. in the assembly. Yeah. I wasn't in the Senate. People are sleeping on tables, on floors, on the, uh, on, uh, on on desks. I remember, I'll never forget, just going, God bless his soul, he's gone now. Joe Azzalina, you oh, know yeah. his name, right? Of course. He was an older gentleman, oh, yeah. right? Going by during this whole thing and him just kind of laying on a, on a table, snoring to high heaven. I mean, it was crazy how these budgets were going. Uh, I would think that this budget's going to be a smoother and civilized process. I would hope so. We have about five, not even four minutes or so left in your program, Senator. As always, it has just flown by. From the frying pan into the fire, what is your position, you or your team, with respect to allowing or not allowing illegal immigrants to be granted driver's licenses? Okay, and we were clear during the election when the two assemblymen ran. We are clear now. We're opposed to that. You know, so we have many constituents in our district that are Hispanic, and many, of, and they're all legal, by the way. And I, you know, when we when when we first came out about that as a team, it was interesting. It was interesting to see as a team when we first came out about that that uh, people said, "Oh, they're going to get real mad at you." And actually, a lot of folks came up to us in the Hispanic community and said, "You know, we worked so hard yes. to become legal exactly. citizens." of, you know, New Jersey and of Vineland and where we are, um, we are a system and a, and a government of laws, and we need to obey the law and what we I, need what to I, follow the law. What I love about Senator Jeff Andrew, you can ask him the quote-unquote controversial questions, and you don't get demagogued. You get it. You get an unambiguous answer. Let me see if I can keep going. Mm. The governor has spoken out, as you know, against accepting Syrian refugees at this point in time, do you think he is right? What's your position? Yes, I do believe he's right. My heart bleeds for these refugees. Yeah. Uh, we all do. We are, and as you've heard over and over again, others say we are a good people 
that really do try to help others all around the world. Harry, I don't. If we've, I, I wonder if anybody's ever told how much money over all the years of the history of this nation, the history from its inception, how many, tri- not billions, it must be trillions of dollars we've given to help other people in need, and we'll continue to do so. And you do want to help orphans, and you do want to help children, and you do want to help widows, but at the same time, there are two issues here. One of them is even if one out of 100 of those folks are not vetted properly and are something more than just a widow or an orphan, I'm concerned. I'm concerned yeah, and, for and, our people. And, and by the way, it's, it's statistically, it's at least two out of 100. And there was a veteran, a very distinguished hero, who said, hey, if you had 100 grapes in a bowl and you told someone that two of them are absolutely poisoned and they will kill you, would you eat out of that bowl? That's 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 a good analogy. You got ninety eight yeah. chances that you're so, going to eat a clean grape, but there's two chances. So that's an issue that you're and, going and that, down. And that doesn't mean, and it's hurtful. It doesn't mean that you don't love or care for those people, that you don't pray for them, exactly. that you even hopefully will find yeah. a way to help them. We're, it doesn't and, mean that we'll and, never help them, yeah. but it means we have to stop and right. slow down right, right now. We're in a situation and figure where we out can't how to do it. really vet them. This is a little scary that, right now, and we challenge. have to be a little careful. And the second issue that somebody brought up to me, we have homeless veterans. We have tremendous numbers of people in need. I look out in your parking lot right now, and to the good graces of, of a lot of your folks, they're giving out turkeys um, to people who need turkey dinners on Thanksgiving to help them. Quick, quick promo. Over 800 families today will have been fed for Thanksgiving, and that is the full meal, turkey, stuffing, mashed potatoes, pies, uh, string beans, other vegetables, a full dinner for four for over 800 families. Well, I Senator. think maybe we got to take care of these folks too. Yeah. You know, so I, I, it's a mixed thing. Want to help, certainly care, certainly feel for them. And when you see some of those kids, you, you really do. Senator. But we're not going to endanger. That's right. Three, three minutes left in your program, and we need to conclude on a point that I think is extraordinarily important to all of us. And your leadership in this area has been consistent, and it has been appreciated. And what are what are your thoughts about moving and at what pace regarding the pilot, the payment in lieu of taxes, the legislation for Atlantic City. What are your thoughts? We've got to get it done. Whatever works. I've, you know, it's it's not my district, so I haven't been directly, I've been tangentially involved. <clears throat> I really believe that the governor and the Senate president and hopefully a few other folks are going to get together and get this done. We are going through some really times of great concern. I'm really concerned about North Jersey casinos, really concerned about the pilot program, because if the pilot program doesn't work right, and if everybody's taxes increase a great deal in Egg Harbor Township and I'm seeking and in Margate, and I'm not going to name every town in Atlanta County, you get the point. Yes. Um, that hurts the whole area. And you've, Harry, you've seen the new statistics, and you see where Atlanta County is falling now, yeah. and you've seen the change that's happened. We really need to do something here. The county room tax, we can squeeze this in. Looks like it's moving forward. You stated previously your opposition. Where do you stand Still now? against it. So this is a room tax that would be permissive for folks that don't know what that means. Um, what you could do if you wanted to in a county, if this legislation becomes law, is tax a 1%, 1 cent tax on rooms, uh, boarding rooms, bed and breakfasts, and of course, hotels and motels. Um, we already, especially in certain places in Cape May County, I will be a little parochial here. There are certain areas like the Wildwoods and other areas where the taxes are already through the roof on the rooms and in Cape May. I just don't think we need another tax. I really don't. So I'm not voting for it. And I would, and I understand that the tax would be just for the county and then, then the county could use it to help supposedly tax taxpayers. We've heard that before, but I have a concern with it. I'm not a supporter of it. All right, Senator, you know what I'm doing because you're the banner sponsor for probably <clears throat> 15 years of the Atlantic High Holy Spirit game. You know I'm going to be there, and Margie is then making a wonderful Thanksgiving dinner for our entire family. What are you doing for Thanksgiving? I'm actually going to be heading north just a little bit. We'll be with my family. It's always good. Everybody will be together. Do you need so, a special card to go uh, into no, the I northern know. portion? <laughs> just it's actually the central. So, <laughs> okay. Actually, what's Point Pleasant? Your central Point district. Pleasant, I think, is central, right? <laughs> yes. So we're going to be in actually that is 
northern, what is that? That's uh, not Monmouth County. That is northern Ocean County. Yes, yes. it is. Yeah. It's northern Ocean yeah, County. Not far. Um, so it's not far. So that's where my- Almost si- Joe Krillis territory. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. where my sister-in-law is, and she's going to have her family there. So I'm going to see my nieces, my nephews, my grandnephew- um, still waiting. This is a message out to my son and daughter. Wouldn't mind having some grandchildren someday. It's a, um, it's the it's a wonderful thing. I know oh. it is. It is. I, I got grand doggies, but that's yeah, it. Yeah. So the, there and there will there will be dogs and people, and uh, we'll have the whole family together. It'll be a lot of fun. And and you know what? Everybody's going to get really animated. This is the one humorous thing out of this. Really animated about politics. There are some a few people there that are really very political, right? Mm-hmm. I have a couple teachers and a couple other people, really very political. And it's so surprising, Harry, because if you saw me, I said, you know what? This is my vacation day. Yeah, you don't talk about I that. I ain't doing it. Yeah. I ain't doing it. I'm actually here. I'm going to have a little scotch. I'm going to watch the game. A fire needs I'm fuel ha- to burn. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you do not give it the fuel, it goes out. Yep. Uh, I wish I could say go Eagles, but uh, I think it's oh it's, god <laughs> they're gonna win they're gonna I, I, I mean that they're gonna win this game. The shame is though Detroit's actually starting to play a lot better and yeah. they play even better at home. Yeah. So if they don't win this one, then it really is see you next year. Yeah, I know, well, Senator. It always flies by. Thank you. I won't say it's been a great year yet because we still have December. But uh, thanks for everything that you do. It's a pleasure to be here, and thank you for having me as always. Harry. Honored to present you, sir. You've been listening to New Jersey Senator Jeff Andrew from the 1st Legislative District. We covered a lot of ground tonight. Thank you, Frank, Susan, Joe, everybody that checked in.